But this is the GTN Show brought to you by Amp Human. Welcome back, everyone. Now, with the current global social isolation we're all finding ourselves in, it is a challenge, but that does not seem to be stopping a lot of you out there. As you're searching for new challenges, us included here at GTN. And we're going to be sharing our new challenge with you today. But on a more serious note, we're also going to be tackling the subject of whether we should be training or not. And if we do train, how hard we train. And we're going to be talking to some pros for some advice on that subject. Now, with this whole lockdown, we are seeing more and more virtual races pop up. And this week is no different. We've got more races to add to the calendar. We'll be talking about those and also updating on the results from those previous virtual races. So, with so much to cover today, let's get going. Hi there and welcome. Now, I thought I would start things off with a bit of a debate asking whether we should be training hard at the moment in these current situations with social distancing due to coronavirus. And there seems to be quite a debate out there. Some people saying, yes, it's fine to go out and do plenty of exercise. Why not use that time? Others thinking that maybe it's better to not venture too far from the sofa. And this extends not just to the general population and to us as age group triathletes, but also to the pros. And you're seeing quite a split opinion when it comes to that. Some really opting to use this period as a bit of downtime so time to switch off mentally and physically we've seen the likes of Vicky Holland talking about drinking tea and eating lots of biscuits and just having a bit of downtime after winning in Malula bar we've also seen Sarah True talking about re putting her energy into other aspects of her life and kind of letting triathlon you know take a slight back burner because after all your know, health comes first before sport but then there's some athletes who are frequently racing quite a lot training hard and using the fact that there's time at the moment without other distractions to go and do that hard training and both Mark and myself are doing a certain amount of training because we're doing this 5k challenge but of course we are listening to our health and just staying within what is reasonable for our normal amount of training but I thought I would actually speak to one of the pros who is training pretty hard at the moment so I caught up with multiple world champion Flora Duffy. Yeah, hey Heather. Um, yeah, so I'm here in Stellenbosch and the plan was actually to leave to go back to Boulder April 1st. But then, of course, with the whole lockdown um, and everything going on, flights were cancelled and it's not possible to leave at the moment, uh, which is not a big deal because this is kind of like a second home to us. Well, second home to me, Dan's like actual home uh, being raised here so we have a house and so it's pretty easy for us still to be here we're set up both sides with um my bikes and training room and everything so you know it's not a huge inconvenience to still be here cool and i know south africa's got a full lockdown but how are you approaching your training because obviously you know you were on catch up coming into the season after last year being injured and looked like you were so ready to really hit the ground running. So how, how have you adapted your training as a result of like last year and now this situation? Yeah, so we have a full lockdown this side. So we're not allowed to go outside to exercise, only allowed to leave the house for essential items such as groceries. So yeah, everything is taking place um, in my garage. <laughs> Luckily, I had a pretty full bike set up. So that was pretty easy. I was already riding indoors pre-lockdown because I'd broken my hand, um, which is a whole crazy story. So that was pretty smooth, actually, the transition to just, okay, continue to ride inside. And then we luckily managed to buy a treadmill just before the lockdown uh, took place. So I've been able to carry on my run training. Obviously, on the treadmill, it's not – it's – it's not the most fun. I struggle with it, but I'm very, very grateful that I am still able to run and pretty much train as normal. Um, so yeah, it hasn't hasn't been too crazy of a transition for me. So which I realize I'm very lucky and and grateful for that. And I think a lot of it is in context of the last two years for me having missed so much training consistency because I was so injured that now just being able to train be healthy, not have the chronic, you know, pain in my foot, that um, this extended period of time not being able to race quite yet is actually, it's okay for me because I'm still building back my base, still building back my foundation and consistency that I missed the past two years. But I mean, in saying that, of course, I would love to be racing because I love to race and, you know, of course, it's a lot of fun. But given what's going on in the world, it's a uh, 
it makes sense. And and you're so you're obviously working like really hard and you know training hard and racing. And there's some pros who are like, oh no, you know, backing off. Are you? Do you think if you hadn't been injured, you would still be going as hard as you are now, or might you've kind of been taking this as a break? Yeah, I'm not sure. I I would presume I would still be training um, fairly well at a fairly decent level at the moment if I had raced um, the 2018 and 2019 season and and trained fully through those two years. But it's really hard to say because. I know it takes so much to race and train at such a high level, um, at the, well, particularly when you're racing on the WTS circuit, that it can really take a lot out of you. So then to be able to train at that level uh, off the back of two full-on years and not really know when racing was going to resume again, yeah, I think it would definitely be a lot harder on my motivation and um, yeah, just desire to even stay at at a decent fitness level yeah but well, that's awesome and it makes sense you know it's that some people are maybe able to make the most of this situation and um, if you can you should you know there's nothing that's just how it's worked out for you isn't it which is kind of yeah yeah lucky yeah, in some absolutely. ways but I mean also like everyone always has weaknesses and this is a great time period to work on those if you can find the motivation to do so so even if I was coming off peak fitness in 2019 it doesn't mean I would be necessarily just sitting on the couch now I mean I'd probably be pretty motivated to to work on my weaknesses and figure out how I can can get better I mean it's it's tough out there it's competitive so yeah exactly (laughs) well awesome well it's it's motivating to hear how motivated you are Flora and great to hear from you and good luck with all your training yeah thank you very much well, it's great to see that Flora is able to train really hard and is super motivated. But I also wanted to delve into the science side of things. So we caught up earlier with exercise physiologist Dan Plews. So, I mean, there's a, when there's more time, there's always this idea that, you know, we can do more training. And there's a kind of this, there is this shift towards a lot of virtual racing you see a lot of that online you know the zwift the zwift racing there's even the the vr ironman stuff that's going on and i guess you know you are you can you can um run into this idea that you are training too hard but i use that word hard very very lightly and that you can't really have the word hard without hard has to have two dimensions and that's intensity and duration so you can for sure you can train you can go very hard in those um in those races but you can equally go just as hard if you did a three hour four hour low intensity effort i mean it can be hard to lift a 100 kilogram weight but it's also you know hard to run a marathon so that term you need you do need intensity and duration at the same time um what we know in terms of the immune system and how that works is that it's general overall stress that has that effect so you would be absolutely fine to do hard races, but you wouldn't want to be doing them back to back because you need to allow yourself to recover from those sessions. So if you are doing them, you certainly want to be doing them one day after the next day after the next day. It's fine, but it has to be incorporated into a well-balanced program where, you know, maybe 20% of your overall week is made up of doing those sessions and the rest is kept at a low intensity. And if you think about how that looks in terms of training load, if training load is intensity times duration, so that's kind of the overall marker of overall training stress, you would want to reduce, I would suggest that most people would want to reduce their training load just a little bit to what they normally do. Is from, so from their normal 100% load, maybe just take it back by 10% to not really push the envelope. I don't really think it's a time to be actually doing more unless you're very certain that you are safe and um, and that you are you're not asymptomatic and have and you're you're not at risk. I think yeah, it depends on what part of the world you're in and how severe it is in your in the situation. You know, in, in the US at the moment, highly likely you could very well be asymptomatic. You know, me coming from New Zealand, we've not had as many cases, so maybe it's not as much of a problem. So it's all about you know the context before the the content of what you're trying to do. You have to think about. The, the associated risk before you, you do it. Well, some interesting stuff there from Dan, and it does prove to a certain extent that we're all different, and obviously somebody else's normal could be extremely hard for someone else. And yes, we've got all this time, or lots of us have more time available at the moment without commutes, etc. It can be tempting to do a lot of training, but it's also quite tempting to chill out. And I think we've just got to remember that we're all individual and we've got our different circumstances, and to a certain extent, we've got to listen to our bodies. So with that, we want to throw it to this week's GTM poll to find out what you guys 
guys are doing. Are you training really hard at the moment or are you easing off as a result of coronavirus? Well, the options in this week's poll are either training hard, training easy due to coronavirus, or are you training easy because you just fancy chilling out for a little bit? You can enter that by just clicking up here. And now it's time to take a look at the results from last week's poll where we asked you, would you still bother trying to qualify for Kona this year? if you were already, and just 25% of you said yes, with 75% of you saying no. Right, moving on, earlier in the introduction, Mark mentioned that here at GTN, we're gonna be taking on a bit of a fun challenge. Well, I think it's time I gave him a call to find out exactly what that is. Hey, Mark. Hey, um, yeah, so I thought I'd get us together because, well, I guess this one goes out to the viewers as well. Who out there has been tagged in on a social media post over the past few weeks asking you to do some sort of challenge. Yeah, they do seem to be flying around, don't they? I've definitely had the 5K one thrown at me. Um, but this one, I haven't actually had thrown at me from a friend, but um, well, yeah. Mark... <laughs> so we've decided, because they are quite entertaining to watch, we might get involved on the GTN show with them. We'll challenge each other each week to another challenge. We might even make our own up, but this one has stood out. It's the handstand challenge, or at least kind of a handstand up against a wall. But you've <laughs> yeah. got to put your T-shirt on whilst doing the handstand. Yeah. Bonus points, no. bonus points if you can do it without the wall. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I can already feel your competitive side coming out. I, can't and like, do I bet you've been practicing. Um, <laughs> all right, well, let's go do it, I reckon then. But yeah, send cool. in your suggestions for next week. Any other challenges? We'd love to give them a go. Definitely. anyway, but let's go straight in the deep end and try and put a t-shirt on whilst doing it. wonder if it all comes down to t-shirt placement here. Well, now time for the try news and I've got a lovely bit of news to start off with actually because UK based triathlon firm Hoop who create tri suits, wetsuits, various other items also support the likes of Alistair and Johnny Brownlee. They have created a custom t-shirt and cycling jersey and they're donating all proceeds towards the charity NHS Charities Together. The NHS being the National Health Service here in the UK and like all health services worldwide at the moment, they are having to go above and beyond, go that extra mile and we really do take our hats off to them. We're very thankful to everyone in the health service worldwide for all their efforts at the moment. So a lovely move by Hoop. Um, next bit of news now, this is not so good, and many of you may be aware of this already because it will have affected you. Those that are doing the Ironman virtual racing, there does seem to be a slight disconnect between Ironman and Strava. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all the techie, geeky APIs and all this sort of stuff. Essentially, Ironman were pulling data from Strava into the Ironman VC platform in a way that Strava weren't happy with. Now, in fairness to Ironman, I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt here, they were trying to react to the current times and they were trying to provide us with a platform, something good that's gonna motivate us and keep us really focused and going. Um, and they may well have rushed things through and maybe not got everything confirmed and got consent on various things. So. Strava's response is, it's fine, we're really supportive, here's how you can do it, and we just need to figure out a better way with Ironman going forward. So, not great, but hopefully all's good. Essentially, all you need to do is use your devices as you are and just upload straight from your device's training platform into the Ironman VC platform. 
Well, as I mentioned already, we have loads of virtual events popping up at the moment, and we spotted a great one here in the UK. It comes from the Outlaw Events Company, and they're gonna be running an event every month between now and the end of June as part of their Lockdown Triathlon series. Now, they have three different event options for you that are taking place each month. So we've got the Outlaw Futures, or Future Outlaws for 14 years and under. We've got the Outlaw Sprint and the Outlaw Half. Now, the swim, Obviously, we can't do that. So they have some land-based swim exercises that you can follow. You can find them on their website. The bike to a set distance, or if you don't have a smart trainer, then a set time. I'm not sure how that works, but um, it sounds great anyway. And then the run will be to a set distance. I've actually got them here. So for the futures, it will be a one-lap swim, whatever that is, 8K bike, 1.5K run. Uh, the sprint with two-lap swim, 30K bike, 5K run. And then for the half, it will be a three-lap swim, 56K bike, and a 30 k run but the nice thing here is ordinarily i guess this would appeal to the uk audience for a uk event but this could be open to anyone worldwide now so you can find all the details over on their website and you can if you get involved in each race each month and i guess stick to the same distance and category you can compete for a prize at the end of this series as well as a club competition and a competition for the best photo so if you are interested head on over to the outlaw triathlon event website and find out more now many of you may know the name john mcavoy already now john was previously a high profile armed robber who basically found redemption through the power of sport firstly on the indoor rower and then into triathlon he's doing a Brilliant job with triathlon, actually. But during this global crisis, he's been stuck in isolation. He thought, I could make use of my indoor trainer, my indoor bike, and raise money for Trussell Trust. Now, he's done just that by cycling the length of the UK from Land's End to John O'Groat, so it's just shy of a 1,000 miles. He's actually finished that now, but I managed to catch up with him this time last week as he was partway through. Yeah, so, so basically, like, obviously, we're, we're all in the same situation here, and like, everyone's on lockdown. Um, I, I think in some regards, the thing that makes it a little bit more unique in my situation is because of all the work that I've been doing, um, not just as an athlete, but like away from that, um, I've been getting like a lot of updates from people that work with very vulnerable people, like in the community with children, um, youth centers, people that work at food banks. So like, I am, I'm quite privileged. Like I've, I've got I've got Netflix and I've got an iPad and I've got an iPhone and I've got a turbo transfer. I've got a concept to in my living room. Um, but then when I was getting all these messages and, and I was talking to friends of mine and they, and they were really concerned about this current situation and and then I I really get how some people have got it so so bad like so bad like it's it's all well and good for me to say to people about oh this is amazing like my life turned around when I was in segregation for all those years in prison and and I used it as a moment of growth but. If you're living in a council flat with four children and you can't even put food on the table now, like this is probably the most stressful time that someone could go through. Um, and especially where there's no real ending to it, like there's no certain date. Um, so there's a lot of anxiousness being created, and especially around young children as well in those situations. And and, and I just sat here, Mark, and I, I got so sort of, um, I felt for the first time, I felt quite like helpless because normally like, I'm obviously, I'm restricted to how much I can leave my house and stuff and what I can actually do. And I'm sitting in here and I, and I was like quite, I felt quite lucky and very privileged. And I was like, I, I want to try to do something. And I want to try to give back, but what can I do? I can only leave my house once a day. Um, where, how, how can I interact and, and with, with people to make a bit of a difference? Yeah, I, I thought that I could use my body now to do something good with it and try to give something back. And and I just come up with the idea. I just thought, well, what can I do on a bike? Um, I can cycle from Lands into John O'Goats and I'll try to cover it on distance on Zwift. So I had to set up, log on because I don't use Zwift, so I had to set up an account. Um, I had to borrow a turbo trainer off my mate and then um, and then, and then basically off I went and I, I started riding on Saturday. Um, I did, the first session I did was 250k, which took me about seven hours, seven and a bit hours. Do you know what though? It's quite bizarre as well because because my, the way my, because of obviously like again, the, my experiences of of the situation I've been in and sitting on a ram machine when I was in prison, like I genuinely don't get bored. Like I, I, on on that like, so I love riding my bike in the Alps. Like I absolutely love it because to me it's like I just feel so free when I'm in the mountains riding up mountains. But like, but where I don't get that same satisfaction in Britain riding on the roads here, when I'm riding, I I do the majority of my riding indoors anyway. So I can sit on a watt bike for like four or five hours on a session, 
and just look at the numbers and I don't get bored whatsoever. So when I've been doing this, like my mates have been saying to me like, it must be driving you mad. And I said, no, actually, like I'm really enjoying it. Like I actually <laughs> really love doing it and just sitting there and zoning out and just like, just, just pushing the pedals and just putting the power out and just covering the distance. Oh, that's awesome. So um, explain to me, who are you specifically um, raising the money for? So I'm raising it for an organization called the Trestle Trust. And the Trestle Trust is basically, they, they are like the, the holding charity of all the food banks across the country. Um, so like for your audience, probably what some people will probably not know is that at the moment when children are now gone home in this sort of, um, this, 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 this pandemic, um, one out of five children will not be eating three meals a day. And then one day someone gets sick in the family um, mum gets ill, dad gets ill, and then suddenly they fall behind with their rent. And then the next thing you know, they're dependent on food banks. And and it really opened up my eyes. When I started going to these places and interacting with the people that there and, and listening to their stories, you realise how vulnerable quite a lot of the population are to go there. Um, so, again, when I was in the situation here and I thought, what can I do? They, they were the first sort of organisation that popped to my mind. So the money that I will raise will basically go for, towards the Trestle Trust and the Trestle Trust then will get like um, food and and sort of essential items for families that are very, very vulnerable across the country. Um, so um, just a quick update. So how far are you through at the moment? and How far have you got to go? So I, as of today, I've cycled 540 miles. Um, so I've done 850k. Uh, so I, I should all be finished up by... See, I want to, I want to sort of stagger it out a little bit now, but I'm, I'm getting to the back end of it. So, I'm, I'm gonna probably do 200k tomorrow, 200k on, um, on Friday or Thursday, and then I'll, I'll finish it off with a hundred mile ride on Friday. So I should all be done and dusted by Friday. So it took me like seven days, six days. Well, hats off to John for that. And we also had a similarly impressive performance from our colleague Hank over at GCN, who rode on Zwift for 24 hours. But we may well have someone that has trumped him, or at least we think so as triathletes, because Cillian Ryan of South Africa and also one of the organizers of Challenge Cape Town has run on a treadmill for 24 hours. Now he's actually contacted me and sent in his information. Now he decided because they are in lockdown over in South Africa, they're not really allowed to leave their homes. He'd use his time to run on the treadmill and actually raise money for an orphanage out in South Africa, Guardians of Hope. And he's managed to raise over 13,000 pounds. Now he has admitted it wasn't particularly fast, and I don't blame you, there's probably a little bit of walking in there, it was around 10 minute per kilometre pace, but he covered a total distance of 143.5 kilometres. I mean, all I've got to say is, well done. We're now moving on to giveaway time, or at least to announce the winners of a couple of giveaways. This is one of my favorite bits of the show, when we get the opportunity to do it. So we've got the ASOS giveaway and the Envy wheel set giveaway. These wheels, in fact. So first one, ASOS is for the ASOS Millet GT and Uma GT Climate Evo jackets. We've got four winners here, two male, two female. So Paul Ayres, Shane Black, Celine Vine, and Bridget Kennedy, congratulations to all of you. We'll be in touch and get those products out to you ASAP. Now for the Envy 65 carbon wheel set. Now this is a brand new wheel set from Envy, slightly lower price, but exceptional wheels. We've got one very lucky winner here, and that is, I want a drum roll here. <laughs> Stefan Danabauer. Congratulations again, we'll be in touch and get those wheels out to you ASAP. It's back to me for race news and it might be of the virtual reality version, but there's still plenty of it and it's pretty exciting. We're going to start things off with Ironman VR. We saw this launch three weeks ago with the half Ironman distance followed by the Olympic distance and this weekend just gone, it was down to a sprint. So for age groupers, we could do it over the whole weekend. Pros had a set time and it was four men and four women selected. And the equivalent of the swim was a 1.5k run. It was a 20k bike and a 
5k runner. For the pro racing, it was just the bike race which actually counted and they had to complete the rest of their um, sprint distance triathlon in their own time to complete the run. So the women's race, which was on Saturday, was won by Lisa Norden in a time of 58.24. Considerable margin ahead of Flora Duffy, who finished second in a 101.14. Jen Annette was third and it was Pamela Levera who ended up fourth. And the men's race followed up the next day on Sunday and that was won by Jesper Svensson in a time of 53.29. Carl Buckingham 55.18. Cody Beals in third and Igor Emirelli was fourth. Now for the pros they had to do two laps of the 20k course if you're wondering what those times mean. Now we also last week talked about Super League putting in a team into the classic racing on Zwift. So let's take a look at how they got on. Well, this was the second round of the Zwift Classics and it's a chance to see pro cyclists up against pro triathletes. And it's turned out to be some pretty exciting racing. Last week's course was on the UCI Richmond World Championships course on Zwift. And we have to admit though that the men's race happens on a Friday. The women's race, however, happens just after we film the show. So we won't have the results for that for this week. But the men's race was won by Dan Fleeman, a cyclist, although Lionel Sanders finished seventh. Admittedly, he was racing racing for the Canyon ZCC team, but the Super League team represented pretty well as well. And they had some impressive results. Ali Brownlee was 14th, um, stepped it up quite a bit this week. He's obviously learning some tactics. I think on Zwift Racing, we have Vincent Louis, just two places behind in 16th. Alex Yi in 19th. Richard Murray uh, didn't have quite such a strong day. He was 92nd. I think I saw something on his social actually saying he needs to work out this Zwift Racing. Um, Christian Blumenfeld outside the top 100, which is a surprise, but it does just show how tough these races are and also that some tactics do come into play when it comes to virtual reality racing. Well, talking of which, let's have a look at the Z Pro Tri Series. Now, this has been set up by Zwift purely for pro triathletes. So it's open to 200 professional triathletes, no cyclists involved in this type of racing. And it was pretty exciting to watch last week. Now, last week's race was two laps of the Astoria Line 8 circuit, which equaled 23 kilometers. We have to look at last week's results because it actually happens as this show goes out. So we're a little bit late on the results here, but it, for first race, was packed full of quality pros. On the women's field, we had the likes of Lucy Charles, Flora Duffy, Emma Pallant, Lisa Norden, Georgia Taylor-Brown. And it was Lucy who really started to put the power down, kept doing surges off the front. And we know that she does a lot of her training on Zwift but it ended up coming down to a sprint finish and it was Flora Duffy who showed her power on the bike. Apparently it's her first time ever racing on Zwift but she timed it to perfection to come in first just ahead of Lucy in second and it was Sophie Coldwell in third. Well the men's race followed straight after and again a pretty impressive lineup the likes of Richard Murray, Martin Van Rail. We also had obviously Lionel Sanders, James Kudamar to name but a few and it was Lionel Sanders who was hoping to dominate. We've seen him racing pretty successfully on a lot of these virtual reality e-racing and he kept surging off the front but it came down to a very close finish and Lana managed to make the, the group break up but it was a surprise win for GB athlete Jimmy Kershaw. It was Anthony Costas who finished second and Lionel had to settle with third. Well now time for me to take a look through all your photos and videos that you've been sending into us although I've only got photos this week so please do keep sending your videos too because it's Amazing just seeing what everyone's getting up to if we're trying to think outside the box during these times. First one here from Eduardo is on his ninth floor apartment in Mexico City and says that he's getting some midday workouts and training in with his wife, which is brilliant. I guess actually that may be a positive to the situation. Maybe getting to spend more time with your loved ones um, and doing stuff in the middle of the day. Um, next one from Jacob from Mead in Washington. Um, clearly a farmer said he didn't get his farm chores done in time. So he's now having to ride his bike on the indoor trainer, but he said his pain cave has a nice view and it certainly does. Next one, and I believe we featured this one already, it's Aiden from Azerbaijan, but it looks like we've got a couple more additions or it's definitely from a different angle. Um, said he's spending a lot of time in this place at the moment. Um, and it looks like you've got your partner's bike perhaps on the kicker core next to you. Um, and we've got all these cars around the screen. We've got GTN actually on that screen. Amazing pain cave. But this next one, 
This one comes in from Caleb. This is from Briggs in Texas. He said, this is the home gym of my dreams. I assume he means it's his gym and it was his dream and he's made it become real. Um, he's got, got a turbo trainer, elliptical trainer, treadmill TV for GTN, good man, iPad for Zwift, surround sound to tie all together, full free weight section, bow flex dumbbells on the bench, foam rollers, yoga block, oh my, it goes on. Um, and also stuff for his partner. And wait for it, just got a swim, start, swim spa installed. If you want to invite us out, feel free anytime. I, I would pay a subscription to use that gym. Um, but on that note, I mean, these are incredible pain caves and we do actually have an app, or well, the GCN app, our colleagues over at GCN have an app, sadly we don't, but you can use their app and if you want to upload any pain cave photos, do so in the fan zone and use the hashtag pain cave and both us and GCN will be able to find them. You never know, you might even get featured on GCN as well as us. Um, finally, this one from Anne-Marie from Hilton in South Africa. So they're new to triathlon. They had entered a uh, half Ironman for June, um, but instead they're gonna do a virtual triathlon. They did a virtual triathlon, sorry, at the weekend, but they got an incredible setup just showing us they've got, um, they've got a swimming pool there, which they've attached bungee cords so they can get their workout done. They've also got a watt bike, they've got a mountain bike on an indoor trainer, gym setup. It looks fantastic, really good work. Well, please do keep sending in your photos using the GTM photo upload. That's on screen right now, or you can find the link in the description below. It's my favorite part of the show where I get to enjoy browsing through social media and checking out what the pros have been up to in the last week. And we've got this first one, which has been directed straight at GTN from Joe Skipper. He's got a new pain cave, so let's take a look. He is asking for the approval from GTN. Well, I think that's um, quite, quite flattered by that one. But I'll throw it back to you guys. I want you to let us know in the comments section below what you think of Joe Skipper's brand new pain cave. And we'll pass it back on to him, don't you worry. Um, this next piece of news, which I spotted on Paula Finley's Instagram, it seems as though she's been inspired by the guys, in particular, Lionel Sanders and Sam Long, who've been battling it out for the title of King of the Mountain up the Mount Lemon Climb. While well, she decided to go for the Queen of the Mountain title and headed out for the challenge with Heather Jackson. But she soon left Heather in her wake Paula went on and got the record by almost four minutes in a time of one hour, 31.30. Um, Heather apparently finished almost five minutes behind, but congratulations to Paula. Great to see that the girls are fighting for those titles and beating the cyclists as well. Uh, there's another one here that caught my eye from Tin Don, who's taking things slightly less seriously during this period, and he's got himself a new training partner. It's a very cute picture. Uh, we've also got Daniela Reef, uh, who's not taking herself too seriously at the moment. I've seen a couple of posts. This one, um, looking for a, a summer job. I'm sure there'll be a few offers for her gardening skills. I also saw a post when she was doing some, I think, wall sits with um, her Red Bull cans, getting the sponsors in there as well. Another one that caught my eye, which made me chuckle, was David McNamee giving himself a happy birthday video. I think there's lots of time on the hands of the pros and their imagination is carrying them away slightly, but we like it. It's now time for GTN's caption competition for your chance to win a GTN cap. And last week we rolled all the way back to 2003 for this photo from the world champs in Queenstown. I've narrowed it down to my favorite four. And starting us off, we've got Joel Klingenberg, who says wetsuits have come a long way in 17 years. Christoph Katadenovic comes in with too many people thinking they can bag a win. Uh, next, we've got Luke Orin, policewoman, saying, I wonder if any of these bikes have been outside more than once today. That'll be a DQ. Uh, not sure what the rules are in other countries, but at the moment in the UK, we're allowed out for our one bout of exercise a day. But the winner is Len Whitrock. Well done, Len. You're going to get a GTN cap. Make sure you get in touch because you came in with the caption, the new normal, making sure every bike has their own protective barrier as well. Right, well, if you want a chance to win a GTN cap, then take a look at this photo and make sure you leave your caption suggestions in the comments section below. Well, we've got plenty more coming out this week for you to look forward to. We've got some pro swimming tips coming up as well as a selection of our favorite challenges that we've had over the past couple of years at GTN. So keep an eye out for those. And 
If, like the rest of us at GTN, you're doing quite a lot of indoor training, you might be looking for some new kit, well, check out the GTN shop because they've got some special indoor training bundles which you can find there. You should be able to find that on the screen now. Give us a like if you've enjoyed this video and don't forget you can hit the globe to make sure you subscribe and get all of our videos here at GTN. And you might want to see Mark getting a little creative when it comes to designing his ideal bike, I think it is. You can check out his Frankenbike video that is just down here. And if you want to see me delving into the history of my running shoes, you can check that one out just down here.